today we're going to teach you how to make your very own pack of antique Photoshop actions. Welcome to the Friday Focus, where we show you tips and inspiration for your future photo shoots. For our woodland shoot last week, we retouched a few of the images to have an antique aesthetic to them. Today we want to show you how to achieve this vintage look in your work using Photoshop Actions. We did a photo shoot specifically for this technique, but we found that it really works well on just about anything. Alright, so it's now time to start our actions. We're going to be moving along quite quickly here, so if you need to pause the video to check on numbers and stuff like that, feel free. To get your action started, you're going to have to start a new action set. So our action set right here is called Antique Action Set. And to make a new action set, you click on this folder button down at the bottom of your actions menu. If you don't see your actions menu, go ahead and click on your windows, um, your window button up here at the top and make sure that actions is checked. So, once you have your folder created, you're going to want to create four action names that go underneath it. And to do that, you're going to click this new button and then name your action. The other thing you need to know is once you have started each of these actions, you're going to want to pause them so that you can get the other actions created. The pause button is right here, and the active button is right here, and then the usage button for the actions is right here. Alright, so I have got my antique action set started, and we're going to start on vintage color. With vintage color selected, we're going to go ahead and click the active button. So we are now recording our action once this red circle is on. After that, the first thing we're going to do is go up to Image, Adjustments, and Curves. With curves on, we're going to go ahead and make these adjustments to our curves graph. Once your graph looks something like this, go ahead and click OK. With those adjustments made, the next thing we're going to go ahead and do is go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. With that selected, we're going to go ahead and make a radius of 6.3, at least in my case with Mark III photographs. Do whatever you need to make your image look slightly soft and then you should have the right number. So click OK. And the last thing we're going to do for this first section is we're going to go up to Selective Color. So Image, Adjustments, Selective Color. And we're going to make some adjustments. In the reds, we're going to affect the cyans. Feel free to copy my exact number shifts. In the yellows, we're going to affect the yellows. In the greens, we're going to affect the cyans, magentas, yellows, and blacks. And then in the cyans, we're going to go ahead and affect the yellows. In the magentas, we're going to go ahead and affect the yellows as well. In the whites, we're going to affect every color. Next, we're going to go to our blacks. And after we have all these effects done, we're going to go ahead and click OK. So we're going to say pause. So now we've created our first action. Now to start affecting our next action, let's click on the black and white action and then the red circle to make sure that it's actively recording the new action. After that, let's go up to Image, Adjustments, Brightness and Contrast, and let's move this down, our brightness, and then let's move our contrast way up. After that, we're going to go ahead and go to Image, Adjustments, Black and White, click OK. And we're going to do one more brightness and contrast pass. So image, adjustments, brightness and contrast, and move this up to 39. And now we have our black and white action. So we're going to click the square on that one to stop recording. Click on our sepia and start the recording button. And for our sepia, we're going to go up to image, adjustments, hue and saturation. With hue and saturation, make sure that the colorize box right here is checked and we're going to move our saturation down to 12 and our hue to 33 and also add a little bit of lightness plus 7 and then click OK. 
So with that, we are done with our sepia action. So we're gonna click the square, stop it, click on the black and white helper action right here, and then go ahead and click the circle to activate it. And let's go up to image, adjustments, and our selective color. In selective color, let's go to our blacks, and we're gonna go ahead and do negative one on cyan, negative seven on yellows, add a little bit of blue toning. Then we'll go to our neutrals. And in our neutrals, we're just gonna add a tad bit of yellow. And then let's go to our whites. And in our whites, we're gonna add a little bit of yellow as well. So with that, I'll go ahead and click OK. Before we go on, let's go ahead and click the square to stop recording that action. So now we have created four actions, and there's actually one more we're going to create, which is a non-blurry vintage action. So let's go up to our vintage color action right here, and let's just grab it and drag it down to the new action button, and that created a vintage color copy. We're going to double click on that, and we're going to rename this vintage color sharp. After that, let's just grab the Gaussian blur and drag it to the trash and we got rid of the blur for that action. So now we have created our five actions in this action set. All of these can be mixed and matched and create lots of wonderful combinations that you can use on your photography. So now that Harmony has shown you how to create the actions, let's go ahead and try combining them. So going over here to the anti action set, I'm going to start with the vintage color sharp. Activate that. Do black and white next. So these are all stacking. Black and white helper. Give it that nice coloration. And then lastly, you'll do a CPI. Awesome. And now for a finishing touch to make it look much more authentic as a vintage photograph, I'm going to go ahead and find a stock file that has some film grain and these like metal scratches in it. This texture will be kind of interesting. So let's put that in. Rotate, scale it up, and the blend mode, or our layers here, needs to be set to overlay. From here we can just take the opacity down as much as we want until we have the effect we're looking for. So off, on. Pretty cool. Next I want to do a quick vignette. We do that by doing a new layer, getting our paintbrush with a pretty large, very feathered brush, and we just go ahead and paint black into the corners. This is to simulate the way light falls off at the edges of lenses, especially older lenses. So there you go. No. Uh, we got to do blend mode, soft light, and take the opacity down. So it's kind of a nice subtle effect. And then to really give it the finishing touch I think it needs, let's go ahead, put a Gaussian blur on the whole image that's really strong. Go back into our history, place a history state right before the Gaussian blur. Get a large feathered history brush and just swipe down the center. And with that, we have our finished image. It's a pretty quick and easy way to get a vintage look. We hope this is useful for your own work. Let us know in the comments below if you have any questions. And don't forget to subscribe for new videos every Friday.